We'll move into the public meeting at this time. So the recommendation that the statutory public meeting be called to order at 7.12 p.m. Hooper and a sector for this. Council Lamb, Council Caragini, all in favor? It is carried. The introduction, this meeting is a statutory public meeting held pursuant to section 34 and 36 of the Planning Act to discuss an amendment to zoning bylaw 2010-050 regarding section 4.12, home occupations, and section 4.1.4, minimum side yard setback, central air conditioners, and extension zones. Members of the public will be given the opportunity to speak after staff have made their presentation. Comments presented at this public meeting are being recorded by staff. Personal information is being recorded according to the Municipal Act and the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection and Privacy Act. Questions regarding the collection and use of personal information should be directed to the clerk. Under the Planning Act, the applicant, residents, or anyone having an interest in the matter has the right to appeal any decision of council to the local planning appeal tribunal. The public must verbally express any comments and concerns here tonight or submit the comments in writing to the clerk prior to council's decision on the matter. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions to the public meeting or make written submissions to council before a decision is made on the proposal, that person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision to the local planning appeal tribunal and may not be added as part of the hearing of, of an appeal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal there are reasonable grounds to do so. 5.3, Report of Development and Engineering Services, Public Information Meeting, Town Initiated Zoning Bylaw Amendment, Municipal Home Occupations Provisions, and Interior Side Yard Setbacks for a Central Air Conditioning Unit Provision. So planning staff will now present the contents of the staff report. The presentation by staff will contain an update on comments received to date and does not include a recommendation on the proposal. <coughs> Town staff will provide a report at a later date, which will also reflect and consider the public comments made during this public meeting. So, I'll turn the meeting over now to our planning staff and friends. Uh, good evening, council and members of the public. I'm Brandon Fulbach, founder with the Office of Community Planning. Uh, thanks for attending tonight's meeting for uh, meeting to run in home occupation permissions and we'll have options for new interior and side yard setbacks for potential air conditions. <coughs> I would like to start by providing an overview of the type of condition. I will discuss the purpose of the meeting, introduce the proposal, align the public notice process, uh, provide a detailed overview of the proposal, followed by opening remarks. Uh, and if you wish to receive any further notification on this matter, please print your name and email address and mail address uh, on the end of the roster of the back door. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to introduce staff proposals to council and the public and to invite questions and seek input. Once an application is deemed complete, the town is obligated under the Planning Act to hold a public meeting. I will remind everyone, uh, council will not make any decisions on tonight's amendment. The matter will be referred back to staff to consider the results of the meeting and review comments through the circulation process. At a later date, staff will report to council with recommendations to recommendation review. Notice that the complete application was given in accordance with the planning act. Uh, as prescribed by the planning act, notice of public meeting was placed in the September 13th and 27th editions of the Bradford West Bloomberg Conference. Additionally, notice was posted on the town's website, Bradford this, this week, and Facebook and Twitter. Uh, now I will briefly go over the background as to how we arrived to tonight. On October 18th, 2016, Council passed a resolution requesting staff to provide information related to broadening home-based business permission within the zone of my law. This resolution was provided generally in response to recent inquiries from residents and property owners regarding permissions within the zoning bylaw, uh, primarily related to outdoor swim lessons and music lessons in the home at that time. On May 16, 2017, staff presented additional findings to council. Uh, in the staff report at that time, from the staff report at that time, council directed staff to initiate a general review of the home occupation section of the zoning bylaw 
and the return, with recommended amendments brought in and made in the office. Uh, additionally, around this time, council had requested that staff review the staff provision for central air conditioning in response to a number of uh, public inquiries related to the compliance of the constructed units. Uh, on June 5th, 2018, staff brought forward the broad forward and direction report. This report reviewed and compared the home occupation and air conditioning provisions of 16 municipalities. This concluded with council carrying, carrying forward a motion that's not going to initiate a joint bylaw amendment based on that recommendation report. And that's where we are tonight. At this point in time, staff is proposing following changes to the zoning bylaw. On the next, day, next slide, I will briefly discuss each change, uh, with, uh, which will broaden information. Uh, for the home occupations, I will also touch on proposed rules and safeguards in the intent of maintaining residential character. But first I will discuss the air conditioning uh, provision. Uh, the purpose of this air conditioning revision would be to reduce the current required setback between the air conditioning unit and the property line in the side yard would be 1.2 meters, which is about 4 feet to 0 0.6 meters, 0 0.6 meters, which is This would provide flexibility, increased flexibility, and legalize the number of encroaching units, but there would still be a significant number of properties that would still remain not compliant. Those, those that come to attention of that uh, the town would need to be addressed through leak relocation, removal, or minor variance. This could potentially result in a large number of minor variance requests, which would require a significant time staff and committee process. Uh, a consideration to address this challenge would be reducing the air conditioner setback to zero. This was done in Innisfil. An alternative method of this would be uh, removing the uh, removing air conditioners as a structure in the zoning bylaw. This was completed by uh, in the city of Barry. Uh Both of these options, setback distance options, will be reviewed in greater detail ahead of a recommendation. The remaining changes related to the home occupation, uh, the remaining changes will look at the home occupation section of the zoning bylaw. The first proposed change is to provide, is to provide permission to work and store goods inside an accessory building, such as, an, such as an enclosed private garage. For example, this change is expected to provide flexibility to residents who create that often require additional storage for material, equipment, and work tables, or to conduct a trade that is inappropriate or unsafe for a house. The house. Uh, I will note using accessory buildings such as the garage will only be permitted in the situation that you uh, still have the required parking for that zone. In most residential zones, for, for, for detached dwellings, that would be too safe. Also, the owner must ensure accessory building, the accessory building is safe for that for his or her trade. So this might result in the owner having to apply for a building permit to ensure safety. The second proposed change is to permit the sale of incidental goods. Uh, this would allow home occupations when applicable to sell goods that are closely associated or required to conduct their service or business. The good, goods sold must be purely supportive of the service provided. An example of this might be a doctor, uh, a doctor such as a natural path selling recommended ointments, ointments or supplements which would promote health to distinguishing visits or possibly a uh, dentist selling a two-point. As a safeguard to protecting situations where where the use is really primary retail, staff would prohibit retail stores as currently defined in the zoning bylaw. The third proposed change is to provide permission for online sales and delivery of goods. The common example of, common example of this would be a resident with an online store, an uh, online website, or somebody who uses eBay to sell goods from their home. A safeguard to help protect tra protect neighborhoods from traffic would be that no customer pickup would be allowed, and that and that the resident or a typical neighborhood delivery service would be delivering all the goods away, <laughs> such as Canada Post or UPS. And additionally, the vehicle size should not be any larger than a UPS truck. <coughs> Uh, 
the fourth proposed change is to formally permit home-based teaching, such as literary music, but also now provide grammar. Safeguards include compliance with the above definition, that the total amount of permitted students at one time is five, and that there are no more than three students over a 24-hour period, and that the owner completes due diligence to ensure safety. I will note that these three safeguards will show up a few times behind ahead, and I'll refer to this example. Uh, in regards to the second safeguard, which is relating to the maximum number of students and uh, students over 24 hours, this will continue to be reviewed and discussed uh, as we continue to do research and see what is appropriate <coughs> for uh, different cases, and it can be adjusted as likely will. The third safeguard is related to due diligence and safety, and this will be explained in greater detail in change number 10. The fifth proposed change is to, permit, is to permit fitness instruction such as personal training and yoga class. This use uses the same safeguards as home-based teaching. The sixth proposed change is to permit outdoor swimming lessons. This use, these will use the same home, will utilize the same safeguards as home base. The seventh proposed change would be to enable residents to undertake small scale catering operations such as small bakeries and meal delivery businesses. <coughs> safeguards include that sit down residents would be strictly prohibited, as such, Restaurant, at your restaurant, and take restaurants as currently defined in the zoning bylaw would be identified as a prohibited use. Uh, an additional safeguard would be compliance with the above definition that all goods must be delivered. And additionally, uh, the owner must ensure safety. Uh, this might mean getting health unit approval for food safety or applying for a building permit to, in order to have a commercial grade kitchen. <coughs> The eighth proposed change is to formally allow medical professionals to work out of their home. At this stage, the definition is rather open-ended and includes doctors, dentists, psychiatrists, and more. Safeguards include compliance with the definition, a maximum of one client per practitioner, with a maximum of 20 over 24 hours. Uh, and this number can be examined as we move forward. Uh, that accommodation of patients overnight is prohibited that there will be a maximum of two examination rates. And additionally, there will be the due diligence and safety. The ninth proposed change includes a number of administrative changes. Uh, they include, include the following. Number one, permitting residents to use accessory buildings for profit, provided it is, it is for a home business. Number two, uh, this includes a number of minor changes to make it uh, to the existing bylaw to make accessory buildings a permitted location uh, to explore or use goods in addition to the dwelling. Number three, uh, this would revise the current existing <coughs> GFA calculation to instead, which is currently just the uh, the home occupation area and the dwelling to now be the area used as a home occupation in both the dwelling and the Building. So it would just be one. And number four would be to permit home occupations in both duplexes and townhouses, which were previously included, previously excluded in the building bylaw. So the previous fine changes that I mentioned would significantly broaden the home occupation section. So the tenth check proposed change encompasses a number of additional safeguards which would serve as checks and balances for the new permissions. Number one is that uh, owner is the one that I previously mentioned, which is owner due diligence and safety. Uh, I previously mentioned this one. Uh, it, it currently states, all home occupations shall, uses shall not create or become a fire, health, or building hazard. The owner is responsible for meeting all, the, all local and provincial regulations, legislation, policies, and applicable, applicable to the proposed occupation use, and they must apply for any permits needed as a result of physical changes in the building. Uh, 
the thoughts behind this provision was that staff want to enable, we want to enable residents to pursue a greater variety of home occupation, but at the same time, residents must take responsibility and complete their own due diligence to ensure they're taking necessary precautions when, when applicable. Number two, the dwelling must be the primary residence of the home occupation owner. The existing provision would be adjusted to ensure that the person conducting the home occupation is the principal resident of the dwelling and not a occasional or casual resident. Number three is a modernized, modernized <coughs> instant provision. This provision will be updated to account for television, radio, and, it, and internet interference. Number four is the, is the home occupation hours of operation. A new provision will be created which states visitation of non-permanent residents for the purpose of attending a home occupation is not limited to lessons, classes, construction, and delivery. It's only permitted to take place between the hours of 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. The idea behind this provision is that uh, it is to be mindful and respectful of property owners by reducing possible nuisance created by homeowners in the evenings, which is when people traditionally come home from work. Uh, but the, this, uh, this provision will, like others, will continue to be uh, examined more carefully. Number five is to prohibit a, ra a residence as a rallying point. The purpose of this provision is to ensure large groups such as is to ensure large groups of workers do not congregate at a dwelling to carpool, and which may result in leaving cars parked park within the residential area, all carpool. Uh, number six. Uh, number six is a general residential protection provision. Uh, a new provision would be created for space. The operation of the home occupation shall not have a negative impact on residential character of the neighborhood. Home occupations are not intended to permit economic activities that are more appropriately located in industrial or commercial zones, where full-scale parking, traffic, mining, storage, shipping, commercial service, and, and employees in excess that, that are of uh, residential neighborhood. So essentially, the idea is you're trying to keep home occupations are generally supposed to be invisible. You're not really supposed to know that there is a home occupation there. So the idea is we, we want to maintain that. So those are all 10 changes. Uh, we're going to move on. At this point, I will share all the comments that I have received from the public and agents of today. Today, though, I have received four letters from the public, and all comments received will be reviewed, considered, and answered in the recommendation. President number one asked what, what will happen to owners whose air conditioner, air conditioner continue to encroach the fire following the council decision. Additionally, they wanted staff to be aware that many people purchase home, home, homes with air conditioners already located in uh, non-permitted locations. Resident number two cited that Hewlett Packard and Apple were started in garages, and consideration should be given to broad solutions to enable the start of business. Uh, they also requested consideration of small, of small, house, small greenhouses and small repair businesses in detached accessory buildings. They also ask that staff consider multi-unit buildings as a permitted location for home occupation. <coughs> Residence number three is interested in the definition of medical practitioner and what would be included in the provision. Additionally, they, they inquired how staff will know if somebody is operating a home occupation occupation and this was specifically pointed at online sales. Uh, resident number four asked for clarification if daycares will fall under the home occupation rules. Additionally they inquired if businesses if a business license business permit or business license would be required for a home occupation. The following agency, the following agencies have uh, comments have been received, and they do not have any objections or concerns at the time. Uh, 
Regent uh, Internal Department. Now I'll go over the Internal Department and agency that did provide comments at the time. Uh, Enforcement Division provided the following interesting comments for Council's consideration. It would, be in the, uh, it would be in the interest of the town to retain an existing setback even if it is 0 0.01 meters. This would allow enforcement staff to address bona fide encroachment issues between neighbors with those simply telling residents it is a simple issue. Also, to note a conventional agency is constantly 36 inches long. If staff were to propose a 0 0.6 meter setback, a property owner would need a minimum of five, five feet of a minimum 5.5 yard to accommodate uh, based on the proposed. Uh, zoning by law <coughs> Based on enforcement observations, this would preclude any well, 27 foot or 40 foot plot frontages from having the AC unit in their side yard. The account of AOD A representative uh, noted that while there is no AOD requirement regarding, regarding setback, this could potentially create a barrier to access the rear yard. <coughs> the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit, uh, this is the State Water Division. Uh, they inquired whether some schools will require health units on off, and what mechanism will be put in place to exchange information between the town and the health unit. <coughs> the purpose of tonight's public meeting was to introduce the town initiated proposal to the council, to the public, and to invite questions and seek input. Planning staff will continue to, val to evaluate the proposal, to consider the results of the public meeting, and to review comments received through the circulation process. Staff will report back to Council with recommendation at a later date once a comprehensive review has been completed. This public meeting is one step in, in the processing of an application under the planning act, and members of the, pub, of the public may continue to provide early comments on the proposal to the community planning after this meeting. <coughs> members of the public who wish to receive notice of future council meetings when this amendment, such as when this amendment will be considered. I request that you please send your contact information on the attendance roster at the back of the room. Additionally, you can send an email to planninginfo at townofdwg.com. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Brandon. And, uh, so at this time, we have public participation. So members of the public are now invited to address council and provide any comments and ask questions. Please provide your name and address and speak directly into the microphone. And if residents have a prepared written submission, they uh, may submit it to the clerk upon the completion of the presentation. So we will ask uh, members of the public to come forward. It, it is a little different when we do have sort of the two zonings. The one is the air conditioner setback, as well as the other is home occupations. And I think I'd just say that members of council are trying to work with the community, trying to work with our residents to find uh, the best solutions that we can to, uh, to uh, well, home businesses are important in our town, we recognize that, and uh, how can we uh, allow home businesses without uh, causing uh, neighborly disputes. And the air conditioner unit that's been brought forward to us, and we're just uh, asking for your input to find what the best uh, solution is to move forward. And uh, we don't want to uh, cause undue stress, but uh, we want to uh, to change the, the zoning bylaw so that uh, we don't cause undue stress. I guess is the way to put it. So please come forward at this time and uh, and uh, give us your comments.
material and we can use proper wave property. <coughs> Thank everybody at the Town Council uh, for allowing us to come here today. My name is Andrew Kawachi. I'm a retired worker. Recently moved to Bradford, West Williamberry in the summer of 2016. <laughs> I enjoy living in this town and the people are amazing. I am here tonight before Council to ask for your support of the proposal to amend section 4.1.4 and of the zoning bylaw to reduce the minimum side yard setback of central air conditioners in residential zones. 1.2 meters to 0.6 meters. I would like to first thank the Honorable Mayor Rob Keffer and Councillor Ron Moore for taking the time to listen to their constituents. Also, their acknowledgement of our concerns and support in putting forward a resolution that will help all residents of this wonderful town of Bradford. Also, I would like to thank the all I would like to thank all honorable members of the council for allowing us this opportunity present our concerns during this session of the Town Council meeting. Um, I'm going to be referencing to Brandon Slopak's uh, uh, previous report. I wasn't aware of this uh, current report, so a lot of my comments will be based on the prior one. <clears throat> we are residents of the Town of Bradford, West Willenberry, and owners of homes in the new subdivision of Ward 4 near 8th Line and Summerlin Trail. <coughs> we were each served with a notice of violation on December the 7th, 2016 of a central air conditioning setback in contravention of zone by zoning bylaw 2010-050. We have met with the town mayor, Rob Kepper, honorable, me honorable member of council, Ron Orr, Ward 4, and Mr. Brandon Slovak, MES Planner and Office of Community Planning. During our several meetings, we have looked at requesting for a minor variance and how other cities or towns dealt with similar concerns regarding setbacks air conditioning unit. Note, it was determined that a, a minor variance was not a viable option. In Mr. Slovak's report, number DES 2018-22, dated June 5th, had supported our original contention to the bylaw that other towns and cities around Bradford had a reduced or no minimum setback requirement. Shown obviously in the example there, Barry and Innsville have the zero uh, setback. The report states, quote, staff completed a survey of the required setbacks for 12 other municipalities. Of all the surveyed municipalities, only Aurora matched Bradford's West William Barry's 1.2 meter setback, <coughs> while 11 municipalities had a setback less than 1.2 meters. The most popular setback was 0.6 meters with six of the 12 municipalities applying this standard. It is our opinion that the minimum setback requirement for air conditioning units was specified in the town of Bradford, West Williamberry, by the bylaw 2010-50 needs to be revisited. And that, and that 11 of the 12 surrounding towns and cities had a reduced minimum setback requirement for air conditioning units with six of these municipalities sharing a similar bylaw. Now, at the June, I was here at the June 5th meeting, and some of the comments that were said at the open meeting by councillors I'd like to address. It was mentioned at the June 5th meeting of the town council that changing the side yard, side yard setback at this time would not be fair to those residents who were given notice of violation and then comply. I would respectfully submit that progress is change and change is progress. Currently, we are in the midst of the federal government legalizing marijuana on October the 17th. Would one reject this law simply because previous violators in possession were charged and prosecuted? Change is progress, and progress is a positive change. This proposal before council is a change for the positive for all residents that brings Bradford in line with other surrounding municipalities. At the same meeting, concerns were raised regarding the fan noise and compressor vib vibration of air conditioning units. Historically, noise has always been in the forefront of all bylaws and complaints by residents and property owners. However, noise complaints are hardly or rarely resulting from a noisy air conditioning unit. And this is supported again in the report number DDS 2022, which states, quote, staff are not aware of any noise bylaw related complaints regarding air conditioning units, and therefore, noise generally doesn't seem to be. 
we can all agree that today's air conditioners must meet strict standards and rigid environmental guidelines. They are more lean, quieter, and efficient machines with little to no noise or vibrations. And lastly, the difference between a 1.2 meters setback and a 0.6 meter set setback proposed in the amendment would have no notable difference in noise or sound there. Now, at this time, I just want to bring your attention. Uh, I would like to bring to your attention a survey that Jason and myself did on a Saturday morning for approximately two and a half hours. We drove in all of the seven wards within Bradford. We basically took two streets per ward and noted, recorded, 551 homes that were in violation of the current minimum setback requirement as per the bylaw 2010-0. It was very obvious and apparent to us that we saw all types of homes, old, new, single, and semi, that were in violation. These homes were not specific to any particular area or ward. This represents approximately 75 homes per ward reported in minutes. Now I'm going to turn over the mic to Jason. <coughs> Additional concern was the safety concerns raised for emergency access by first responders. It is not an issue as proposed amendment changing the 1.2 meters to 0.6 meters it meets the minimum required by the Ontario Building Standard as presented in the 2018 report uh, completed by the Planning Department. Our backyards are one of our last havens for our children to play safely without strict supervision. Placing an air conditioner unit in the backyard would create a safety concern, preventing children from roaming freely without having an adult standing behind them at all times. The safety concerns are amplified during the, Christ uh, the holidays, where uh, a lot of a large amount of children are together playing in the backyard. That increases the chance of, of uh, foreign objects being placed into these uh, air conditioning units and causing severe injury. By placing the units in the side, it would eliminate the risk and allow full usage of the uh, backyard for families who worked hard to purchase their homes and utilize the uh, available backyard space. It was suggested in the DES 2018 report from the planning department that maintaining the current bylaw would, cost would be cost prohibitive to the town. It stated, when responding to any type of call in the rear or side yard, bylaw enforcement officers would witness countless cases where they clearly evident that the installed air conditioning units does not meet the uh, setback requirements, which was not the subject of the complaint <coughs> investigations. Therefore, should all existing cases of encroachment come forward, either through complaints or staff identification, the enforcement division would experience a significant increase in workload that would be dedicated solely to investigating and undertaking administrative requirements for enforcing the zoning bylaw, including potential prosecutions. Based on the uh, facts that we've raised today, it is in our opinion that supporting this proposed change to the bylaw reducing the 1.2 meters to the 0 0.6 meters would be a cost savings to the town of Bradford and the property taxpayers. One thing that wasn't mentioned in our time when we were doing our investigation, um, Vaughn was under the uh, same review and the actual setback bylaw was uh, suspended and according to the uh, Today's uh, findings, it seems that they've adopted the uh, 1.6 uh, uh, setback. 0.6, sorry, yeah. <laughs> the 0.6, sorry. We, we respectfully request the honorable members of the Council of the Town of Bradford West Village to support and adopt the proposal to amend Section 414 of the Zoning Bylaw to reduce the minimum side yard setbacks for central air conditioners and residential zones from 1.2 meters to, I never mentioned, 0.6 meters. I would like to thank you all for your kind attention and understanding. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. uh, we'll have all the um, members of the public come forward and then if there's any answers that we can do at this time. But uh, thank you for your well researched uh, presentation and uh, yes, the link was down. And uh, uh, We'll make note of that, and staff will make note of that. Okay, next up. Um, one of the 
particularly as the town has been made aware of the impact of the violation of the bylaws is having on me. The town council needs to think about the impacts to residents in changing the zoning bylaw. There are noise and health impacts as I have described, also environmental and financial impacts as the proposed amendment forces residents to shut themselves inside and use their air conditioning units if they have one. My ask to town council, if the town is going to choose not to enforce the zoning bylaw and the noise bylaw, and if it is going to amend the current zoning bylaw to increase the risk of invasive noise, then town council must impose, impose noise attenuating requirements on the property whose air conditioning unit emits excessive noise. If town council chooses not to enforce the zoning bylaw or the noise or the noise bylaw in regards to my neighbor's central air conditioning unit, the burden should be on my neighbor to install a silent fence so that the loud, sharp, piercing, and unrelenting nuisance, which is his air conditioning unit, does not impair my use and enjoyment of my property, and more importantly, does not undermine my health. Okay, thank you, and uh, yeah, we appreciate that uh, um, you have come forward and, and uh, gave a very descriptive uh, uh, summary of, of the issues that you're facing it because of the noise. Um, staff will certainly take this into account, and the, the noise attenuating as well as the noise bylaw is in some way that we can have, uh, and, and I believe the noise bylaw is in place now that if a neighbor is experience, uh, experiencing undue uh, hardship. Yeah. And, and that, uh, so, yes, moving forward, we will investigate that and uh, thank you for uh, coming forward and uh, um, we, yeah thank you for your submission and thank you Tara for uh, helping out it's, uh, next up Mr. Mayor, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, members of council, it's good to see you this evening. I am not here about air conditioning setbacks. My interest in attending tonight was with respect to the home occupation's proposed amendments. I am asking tonight for leave and some guidance as to an extension of time to present a more detailed analysis of comments, questions, concerns, and perhaps suggestions with respect to the proposed amendments. I am totally cognizant and entirely sympathetic to the strains on the planning staff to get everything done and ready, given all of the work that we have to do in town. But Mr. Slovak's report that detailed safeguards which he saw would be necessary for the various changes in the bylaws wasn't available until this morning on the town's website. And given that, I did not have adequate time to review and examine what those safeguards would do or if other safeguards might be suggested. So I am first asking for some guidance as to a time period in which I might present more detailed written analysis and comments. CAO has just informed me that because of the uh, election, the staff won't have a, a report until early in 2019. So any any comments up until the end of the year, I'm sure, would still be uh, uh, taken into account. So there is quite a bit of time still. To, to, uh, Good. I just wanted to get on record tonight because I know it's the public hearing and legally for me to be able to continue this without objection, it's necessary for me to be here this evening. Finally, the one takeaway I'd like council to have tonight is my question is what are we doing with the bylaw enforcement staff if we are opening up a whole range 
of home occupations that may have a whole range of other issues from various neighbors depending on the understanding and <coughs> compliance or non-compliance with those changes. Because right now, we are seeing a burgeoning population, a burgeoning number of homes. And I think the bylaw enforcement <coughs> staff needs to be looked at, attended to, and made provisions for expansion as needed if these changes go into effect. And that's the one takeaway I'd like you all to have tonight. <coughs> all right? Thank you. Thank you. Maybe for the record, your, your name. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I assumed everyone knew me, but yes, for the record. I'm Donna Gustafson, and I live at 24 Stoddard Court. I'm a member of SWAN, which is our local women's business networking group. I also do run a home-based business. So I came kind of as a representative of my group because I do think it's very important that there are more factors than what is up on the board being considered. Um, some of the things we are looking at, as well as myself, half of our members or more are run out of homes. They are oftentimes single or hardworking mothers. And by having jobs out of their homes, they can both have best of both worlds. They can work and they can be moms. With that being said, sometimes they will evening cooking courses. You'll see more than five people and it'll often extend past 7 p.m. Again, anyone who's got families, gotta get your kid home, gotta get them fed. Sometimes you even gotta get them to bed before you can have people come in. Same thing when it comes to deliveries. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, their jobs do involve sales. Um, when you have small kids, having to get your kids bundled up in the car, in the car seat, and then to your clients isn't always the most convenient. Um, what I would recommend is definitely, I know that this is kind of a, an introduction to the idea, but reach out to some of the home-based businesses, talk to especially the moms who are doing it, and get their opinions on it, because it's not always just as easy as, oh, I've got five orders this week, and I'll deliver them. Especially when you look that oftentimes we get more people coming to our homes for children's play dates or birthday parties than we actually get picking up our supplies. So I just think that um, going forward, definitely talking more with home-based businesses and their personal experiences can give you a lot of information. Thank you. Any other uh, members of the public wish to come forward? setbacks. 
Um, two things stood out to me that our bylaw enforcement brought forward, which I'm sure that you guys will take a look at, and uh, to the gentleman's presentation about changing the setback from 1.2 to 1.6. Uh, Should council decide to change it from 1.2 to 0.6, Anybody who has a 27 foot lot to a 40 foot lot is still in violation of the bylaw. So it doesn't help the situation when it comes to the newer homes. The setbacks are so short as it is that the, by the uh, AC units will still be in contravention even if it was changed that setback. So if council is looking to make the setback um, shorter, a zero setback is something that staff had suggested, however, concerns for bylaw being right on property lines or whatever the case may be. So maybe it's something that we would need to look at if only it was a foot off or six inches off, whatever the case may be. But uh, bylaws comments jumped out to me quite a bit. And uh, also, when this report is brought forward, I know um, to the lady's report saying that the air conditioning sounds have bothered her and it's affecting her way of life. Can we have a report on how many noise bylaw complaints we've received in regards to air conditioners in the past years? Because there are many in this town, thousands in this town. So I'd like to know how many, how many uh, concerns we've received. Councilor Orr. Yes, when, uh, in regards to the air conditioners, when this was brought up to, uh, to myself and uh, the mayor, it was, uh, um, it was uh, brought to our attention of the amount of uh, air conditioners in our uh, town that uh, are not in compliance at this time. And uh, I, my only concern is that, uh, that we make sure that uh, air conditioners are spaced maybe apart enough, but I like the um, our bylaw officer uh, recommendation. I'll, I would like to see uh, that we go with a uh, 0 .001 that gives them a, uh, uh, a chance to uh, look at that uh, if they so want to. If we have a zero, I think it kind of precludes them from going in. But if they have something that at least something that they can win, I think uh, most people would be uh, in our town would be happy with that. And also, if we have a problem with air conditioner that has a, uh, a noise problem, then we need to address that. And um, we, I, I don't know whether we have a, a decibel um, amount that we work with for those things. I'm sure we do. So uh, if we do have a problem, one that should be addressed. Councilor Sandy. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Brendan, I want to thank you for bringing this forward and, and the residents that came out to speak tonight. Um, I dealt with an issue uh, in my first term of council where the complaint was for a home business and the complaint was vibration and noise. I'm in favor of home businesses and I think uh, this council encouraged it, um, but we had hard time trying to prove what was vibration and how you measured it and how the noise was measured because when the when the call came in they said oh I can hear and in this case it was a home gym that they were training like a military style with the big tires and you're dropping the tires and, and the weights and the residents on both sides were saying they can hear vibration and, and they can't sleep and, and it went on for months and months and months I see it in here in the number report. So we're going to measure noise, vibration. I would be interested to see how you plan to do it with our bylaw. That's one thing. Um, the other thing that jumped out when I was reading this report is and one of the residents brought up is the timing. We're a commuter time to town. People don't even get home till 6, 6.30. And if we're saying that if the local person wants to utilize a home business, they get home 6.30, they would only have half hour to go to that business or go somewhere else. That's one concern. Second thing, what I saw on a smaller course would be 
with the home businesses was the parking. We're seeing five at any time. That's five vehicles on a small fork. We had issues before. Um, in regards to the AC setbacks, if we're going to change to 0.6, I, I agree with Brent's uh, comment up there that, that, that we need to go um, lower than that. Uh, we change a bylaw and still happier town is in, in, in contravention. We're just creating more problems and we'll have residents going around taking pictures and sending it to it and tying up all of the bylaw and, and other staff because it won't be uh, compliant. Thank you. Sounds kind of fun. Yeah, a couple of comments. Uh, I uh, raised a comment through the email earlier and that comment was about home occupation and uh, we were talking about practitioners and I talked about a dentist and a dental uh, hygienist as well. Uh, if that were to occur, I could see more than five clients coming through and more than 20 clients per day. Um, that we want to take advantage of, of home businesses, and what I mean by that is uh, a doctor or a dentist may uh, may buy a heritage home, and if, and if he does that, that's kind of a plus for the community because they're going to actually look after a heritage home while uh, running a home-based business. But I can't see uh, like in that bylaw you have one practitioner. But you, you have to understand that a dentist is not going to set up a business uh, with just the dentist there. They're going to set up a business with a, a dental hygienist as well. So that was one of my concerns. Another one was uh, I'm very concerned about uh, uh, the opportunity of a methadone clinic being set up in a residential area. I, I don't want to see that happen. So uh, that's something I need you to make sure that doesn't happen. And that has to be written in such a manner. Um, as far as uh, uh, air conditioners and, and setbacks, I, I believe that more than half of this community uh, do not meet our bylaws. But when we have people with conditions, there has to be something in place that maybe a sound uh, muffling uh, uh, device goes around the air conditioner. And, and maybe that can be written up in such a manner that if a person does have a metal con medical condition, that this does apply. These are things that we can be looking at. And that's just a few of my comments. Deputy Mayor Ledoux. Thank you, Richard. Uh, good report, Grant. Thank you very much for all that. There's, there's a lot. This, this, is a, this is a tough folder to deal with right now, in my mind. And let me tell you that I am 100% in support of home occupational businesses. I look forward to the next Microsoft or Google starting up our community and becoming the billion dollar industry. So I really want to support that, but I still want, I want to make sure that we have safeguards in our zoning bylaw. I want an absolute out clause for council, even if we grant you the, the home occupation, that if you violate, uh, I don't care how we do it, three times, four times, if you violate our bylaw, that you will be shut down. So we need to understand that we need some clear, out message for council to make sure that we can shut it down because we're not going to tax our bylaw people stay and we're not going to have back and forth fights. So you need to have something in there that states that if you continually ruin or uh, uh, abuse the bylaw that there are so many chances and you're out. It's that simple. So I want something like that in that home occupation. When it comes to the AC zoning, um, I would like us to research some of the AC units, get an average decibel reading on the units, Everyone has to pr uh, print their noise uh, in their in their uh, stats, <laughs> their noise levels. We would potentially, and, and I think we're going to reduce the limit. We have to look at a threshold that we're going to deal with and put that in our bylaw as this is our decibel threshold for a AC unit at that level, uh, at that uh, uh, at that point zero six point six. I'm saying uh, that's if we do that. And again, yes, I agree with Council Member that if we have an issue. Um, with a resident that is uh, and, um, having some health issues with it, that we need to uh, have a clause that we can administer some kind of uh, noise muffler, noise and sound bearing uh, issue, whatever. But, so those are a couple of things I want to make sure that we, we really do. I, uh, it's tough, and I know of, of a lot of our residents are in violation. I'm probably one of them. I, I, when I'm reading this, I'm looking up my ear, see, and I'm like, oh my God, right beside the fence. So 
and I have a 50 year old home, so. So I, I want to make sure that we have some safeguards in there to ensure that uh, we can bring uh, people in compliance and at the same time uh, make the quality of life here uh, acceptable for our residents. So, so we can make sure that we have some clauses for the home occupation and the AC. Councilor Bain. Thank you, Councilor Bain. Yeah, I'd like to speak to the home occupation uh, parts of this report. Um, I certainly support home occupations. As I read the report before tonight, I got to admit I, I thought I'd like every point that was in the safeguards as well as the write-up. One of the speakers, I believe the name was Natasha, opened my eyes about the 7 p.m. part. I was totally on side 9 to 7, thinking home occupation for certain ones I was thinking of. 7 p.m. would be okay, but I urge counsel to think about, I don't know, 9 to 9. <coughs> instead of 9 to 7, and I thank Natasha for bringing that point forward. Councilor Lamb? Yes, with regards to uh, air conditioning units, the homeowners don't generally install them themselves. And those units are put in because that's probably the easiest place to access uh, into the home so that the air conditioning unit can function within the interior uh, infrastructure, heating infrastructure, air conditioning infrastructure. So the contractors are out right there and they're putting them there because that's where they probably need to be. If we change the bylaw, say to put them in the back only, that may not be possible in many homes. So I don't know how, uh, we, we don't really have a system of checks and balances of how where the air conditioning unit is going to go when we approve building permits. And we don't have any system in place for somebody who comes in and installs 10 air conditioning units in the new subdivision because they put them where it's easier. So they don't have to run great huge uh, you know, uh, ducts and all kinds of stuff within the home. So I think trying to do this after is you know, kind of like uh, trying to take a laker through a lock that's not big enough. So, um, it's the only analogy I could come up with right now. Bane's quit rolling your eyes. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a situation of where there's cause and effect. And the cause is when the home is built, in the style it's built, where the air conditioning and heating uh, room is, or where your mechanical room is, is where they're going to want to put that unit as close as possible so it's more efficient. So that, I think, needs to be looked at because you simply can't put them where they're not gonna work and function properly. And I like the idea of, uh, of some kind of a, of a, a dampener, a noise dampener on, on some of them. Anyway, that's my two cents worth of it. You know what, I still think you need a little bit of space on the lot line because if you put it at 0 0.0001 centimeter, uh, you're going to have neighbor disputes and people are going to have to walk around and step on the other guy's property. So why not leave two feet so that they don't, they don't trespass? Anyway, those are my three cents worth. For the comments, Councilor Dyke. Well, I'd like to thank everybody that didn't make the presentations tonight on, on the concerns. Uh, you know, we have to listen to, uh, we're here to listen to the public. I'm just, uh, you know, we have to do this right and um, well, now that the size of lots is making make it very difficult. And like Gary said, uh, it all depends on the mechanical room is. But these line sets that go from the air conditioning to those to the furnace, it's that's where there's a lot of cost involved. So, so and I and I can see why everybody wants to to uh, shorten it, uh, shorten it to the home, so we don't have the cost to put to the, to the backyard or whatever. But we have to do do our homework on on this. This is going to be a big impact every year. All the new homes have these new, in, in, all these new uh, air conditioners, and uh, and uh, it does affect people's lives. When, when you have have those things running, it vibrates and depends on what it's uh, sitting, depending on what the uh, air conditioner is sitting on, it, it can vibrate. Another aspect to this that was picked up in this report, uh, I have had over the years many complaints about pool pumps. A similar, more people have air conditioners versus pools, but the pool pump is, is something that I would uh, hopefully this council can look at because 
people come along, they put these uh, pumps in, and, and then the neighbors can feel, uh, feel the noise. But there must be some homework done on uh, on some kind of blanketing. Uh, if people put in uh, some kind of blanketing provision, because no residents should have to suffer with someone putting in the air conditioning and can't live in their own property that they, they own. So this is something that I, I like to see some information from uh, staff or, or uh, the manufacturers. There must be some uh, method, a way of, of helping. You can't bring this out between the neighbors, not only the lot lines, but there has to be something built in. My question to staff is, what happens with the grandfathering of all the existing home-based businesses? And for the record, I, I support our our home-based uh, businesses because so many of us have started that way and have grown. But I just want to know what what happens to the hundreds of businesses we have now that are established and we, we pass new bylaws. How does that, uh, how does our planning staff uh, or bylaw enforcement deal with all that? Well, you know, that's the concern that I have. But, but uh, you know, we've got to do it right and hear from the public and hear from the different home-based businesses. I don't think enough people um, are aware of this uh, on the table being dealt with. But, uh, I think we have to, uh, we have to listen to more residents to have concerns with the home-based businesses and see how it affects the neighbors. And, I'm going to do the break, as, as I said earlier, but I just wondered uh, how it's going to affect with the grandfather. This is a business that already exists there. That's, that's those are my comments. <coughs> hey, we've had uh, good comments and questions from members of council. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're prepared to answer any Councilor Dykes with the grandfathering. I think maybe you'll have to do a little bit more research and see how other municipalities have dealt with that. It's see what the best process going forward is. But uh, anyways, um, I would like to thank you, Brandon, for the report, and uh, members of council and, and uh, community members who are here. And uh, please submit any comments in. Um, I think it would be a good idea to, to uh, talk to uh, Swan uh, ladies to see the home-based businesses at our board of trade to, to be able to uh, get input from some of our business organizations to see what uh, hours of operation uh, would be and the, the number of uh, clients at one time and, and get an idea of what's out there and if there will be uh, effects that we aren't aware of if we do uh, uh, put a certain description on them. So, so with that, uh, council will not make a decision on this matter tonight, but will receive the staff report for information. The matter will be referred back to staff for a further recommendation. Report at a later date, which will probably be early 2019. So I do have a recommendation to re report PDS 2018-41 entitled Public Information Meeting, Town Initiated Zoning Bylaw Amendment to Municipal Home Occupation Provisions and Interior Side Yard Setbacks for a Central Air Conditioning Unit Provision be received and comments made at the public meeting be received for information purposes and that staff consider and address the matters raised at the public meeting in its recommendation report. So a mover and a seconder for this recommendation, Councillor Perugini, <coughs> Councillor Orr. Any other comments? Call for the vote, all in favor? It is carried. So just to follow up.